For 12 weeks, our group has had the privilege of serving the Glenwood community through a tutoring program at Hope Academy. Hope Academy exists to serve students that are socioeconomically disadvantaged. At least 80% of their families will have a household income that is near or below the federal poverty guidelines. Their primary service area is the Florida Street Corridor, which extends from Holden Road to East Lee Street of Greensboro. Within our 20 plus hours of service, each of us have learned the true definition of service learning. We each have identified a major idea or value that relates to the importance of communication scholarship within a community. In this video, we will be discussing how Hope Academy is creating a path for its community's future. We each have different experiences that have changed us as students and human beings. My name is Tony Swain and I volunteer at Hope Academy. Students who live in low-income families are stereotyped and are faced with many obstacles. Due to many factors such as their family structure, where they live, or resources they lack, the odds are against them. According to nccp.org, out of 32% of all children with married parents, 15.5 million live in low-income families. Out of 70% of all children with a single parent, 16.9 million live in low-income families. One of our guest speakers, Mr. Richard Jones, spoke about how the success of children can be told by their reading level as early as the third grade. One of the main activities done at Hope is reading. Tutors are to read to their kids for about 15 minutes and vice versa. Afterwards, the students should explain the book to their tutors or anything they learn. Reading is fundamental. A child is limited in what they can accomplish without good reading and comprehension skills. It's significant in helping to develop the mind, the imagination, and helps us to discover new things. Hope Academy provides resources for students and gives them opportunities to enhance their learning skills as well as their minds. This program is giving students as well as their parents hope for a successful future by embracing their differences and focusing more on their gifts. Every child's reading level isn't the same, but at Hope they are guaranteed the chance to excel in their studies. Students are enhancing their social skills with their peers and are learning about real life scenarios. In Baldwin, the TCs was granted opportunities to cultivate deeper understandings of culturally diverse learners and the challenges that face them. While many TCs gave out a curriculum that represented more the dominant group, after participating in their learning service areas, they understood more. Being around these kids and watching them learn, I cultivated a deeper understanding to the lives that each of them may live every day, and I understand immensely why we participate in community service. While teaching these kids what might be basic math or reading, we are providing them an opportunity to enhance their learning skills, as well as their literacy, for future success in their studies. We're not only giving back to the community, but we're creating a vision for the future of these students. I am John Sclafani. I worked for Hope Academy during this semester. Um, working with Hope Academy has many ways it provides a path for our community future. We can set an example while working with our students. These kids are our future and to be in a position to help them to be more prepared for the future itself is great. Uh, these kids are very smart and they provide hope for our future. Some takeaways I had from this experience is that these kids are resilient. Seeing how these kids are eager to learn and grow despite some challenges that they face was great to see. While I was working with Joseph, it took a while for him to open up. However, once he did, it made the experience better for the both of us. Uh, I will seriously consider returning to Hope Academy next semester. The ways that I was able to connect this to our readings throughout the class, a big one was the transformative community. How we need Glenwood as a community of possibility instead of a community of problems. If we open up and have this discussion, that's already making the first steps to turn this around and make it better for not only us, but for the kids and the future generations. My name is China Walker and I have been working with Hope Academy for over 12 weeks now. Working with Hope Academy has been truly a rewarding experience and something that I noticed right off about Hope Academy is they are an organization that is truly invested in the community and an organization that genuinely cares about the well-being of the students and the families. Working with Hope Academy has allowed me to be truly immersed in my community and participate fully as an active citizen. 
Something that I want to reference are ideals from John McKnight and Peter Block's The Structure of Community, which states, he finds that the most sustainable improvements in the community occur when citizens discover their own power to act. This act of power is present in most stories of lasting community improvement and change. This is something that I found valuable because it's something that Hope Academy embodies. They embody the opportunity to show up and stand up for your community and not wait for leaders to come in and do the work. Another quote that I found to connect well to my time at Hope Academy is, the challenge for community building is this, while visions, plans, and committed top leadership are important, even essential, no clear vision, nor detailed plan, nor committed group of leaders have the power to bring this image of the future into existence without the continued engagement and involvement of citizens. And this leads me to the point of what we do at Hope Academy and why it's so important for us to be tutors. I also feel that learning about community building in academic settings is extremely important for our community and the well-being of our community and the continued building of community. For us to realize and to shape things that we want to see in our community's future is the importance of communication scholarship. Something that I also want to leave is that while you learn about a lot of topics in class and you learn the statistics and you learn the facts, Hope Academy allows you to really be invested and really learn that these facts have faces and these facts have names. And that I also learned that for many, they were allowed the opportunity to learn that these students are more than just their statistics and they're not defined by those statistics, that they tell a whole different um, narrative all on their own. And it's something that we should embrace and they shouldn't be defined by their circumstance. My name is Naya Muhammad, and I have completed 20 plus hours at Hope Academy. I tutor a very energetic first grader who benefits a lot from the tutoring program that they offer um, to the Glenwood community. Bloss says that when citizens care for each other, they become accountable to each other. Care and accountability create a healthy environment. The Hope Academy focuses on the community and the kids' education while also being a safe learning place. Tutoring provides a consistent nurturing environment with an educated adult role model and provides a safe learning space from PovertyInsights.com. The future is created one room at a time, one gathering at a time. Each gathering becomes an example of the future we want to create. A lot of kids at Hope Academy have certain circumstances stacked against them and the conversation should be focused more on their future and not the circumstances. I think the number one problem is the lack of awareness. A lot of kids at UNCG have never been in the Glenwood community, even though it's right down the street. And a lot of people don't know how much um, a community suffer suffers from things like poverty and um, unequal opportunities. And the conversation should be shifted on what we can do to help the kids and the families in the community. My experience from Hope Academy, I have seen how much Joseph has benefited from the program. The first couple of weeks, Joseph didn't have friends, or he told me he didn't have friends, and he used to always sit on the couch during snack time, and he wouldn't talk to nobody, but as the weeks progressed, when I walked in, he would be around a bunch of kids eating snacks and talking, and he's made a lot of connections that I think that he didn't have um, when the program first started. He's a smart kid who who excels in reading, and he didn't like to do his homework at first, but he used to run up to me and be like, I have homework today, I have homework today, and he would even try to do his homework at snack time, just so that we could play a little earlier. Even though these, the um, kids do hear about the projections made against them, I think Hope Academy takes the focus off of that and focuses on the positivity that these kids could bring into the world and how bright their futures could be. My name is Andrew Council and I have learned many things throughout my service learning experience at the Hope Academy. Before I walked into Hope Academy's main common room, I thought I knew what to expect. 
I work with children around this age group every summer, so I knew that I could handle it for a semester. However, on the first day, I realized that my expectations would be challenged. I had no idea what life was like at Hope Academy. I was a stranger walking into their world. My student, Deja Carter, was a ball of energy when I first met him. As I worked with him more and more, I truly realized how well of a student he was. Blog mentions how we displace or assign to others certain qualities that have more to do with us than them. This often occurs when we meet people for the first time. Our work at Hope Academy helps ensure the process of positive youth development. This ideal is vital when discussing a path of hope for this community. Hope Academy is located in the Glenwood neighborhood, which is associated with poverty. Students who come from homes in poverty are seen as delinquents or troublesome based on their financial status. Their financial status can also affect their education. According to the American Psychological Association, more than one-third of low-income students begin kindergarten not ready for school. And by the time they reach fourth grade, 50% will not be at grade level in reading. The youth of Linwood have become victims of generational poverty. According to an article from Stand Together, low-income children are predisposed to various obstacles at school and at home, limiting their chances for educational success. At the same time, missed educational opportunities trap children and young adults in the cycle of poverty. Schools in the Glenwood area are performing significantly below the rest of Guilford County Schools and the NC State average. Hope Academy seeks to end this vicious cycle. As tutors and as service learners, we are taking a stand against this problem. Before my involvement with Hope Academy, I had never heard the term generational poverty being used. As leaders, we are starting this conversation in hopes that this problem can be solved. Blog mentions that community building requires a concept of the leader as one who creates experiences for others, experiences that in themselves are examples of our desired future. I have enjoyed my time serving at Hope Academy. Throughout my involvement, I have learned many things that have allowed me to create a new outlook on life. I have also met many people who have similar interests as me. I hope to go back to Hope Academy and continue my work with my student so that I can see them prosper and grow throughout the future. My name is Grace Winthrop and I've been working at Hope Academy for 12 weeks. Hope Academy is a great example of how a small group can be effective. Block says in the book, the future is created one room at a time, one gathering at a time, and I think this is really true for Hope Academy. Hope Academy started as a neighbor that was helping some kids with their homework after school, and from there a small group was formed. The people who started Hope Academy are still a small group today, but they are so dedicated that they started to look for volunteers. They reached out to people who were in this community of Greensboro, and more specifically students, who were in the process of learning just how important communication scholarship is. We know a lot of the statistics about the students in Glenwood. Like 75% of the kids in Hope Academy are at least one or more grade level behind in reading. And upon seeing that, you might not see how troubling that is, but when you think critically and do some research, you realize that low reading levels in the third grade are related to inmates and the projected cost of bedding for them in the future. When you look at that, you realize just how important it is for us to be informed and spend time with kids to help them catch up academically. It is amazing how much student volunteers can do for their community, and I've been very empowered and humbled by this experience. Empowered because I understand that I alone can make a positive change in my community, and humbled realizing how privileged I was in my academic learning. If I were to recommend anything to Hope Academy, I would recommend that they keep moving forward and growing. Reach volunteers through social media and events. It's so important for us to know all aspects of our community. And even if we are only going to college here at UNCG, we are still a part of the community and have a duty to make it a better place for everyone. No, you can't. Let go. <laughs> what? Yeah, knock it over. Come back.